on behalf of California State Parks, I want to welcome you to Hearst Castle here in San Simeon, California, one of your 280 California State Parks. My name is Laura. I'm a guide here at Hearst Castle. We want to welcome you to a special edition, an Earth Day celebration of Parks PE. We're going to restore our bodies while we restore the Earth. Woo. Now, that being said, I want you to go ahead and imagine a castle in the clouds today. We got a really special weather pattern up here. It's magical, it's mystical, and you're going to see this beautiful castle. Before we get started, I want to see how many of you enjoyed that beautiful Earthcraft seminar, webinar just before us. Raise your hand if you really enjoyed that Earthcraft. All right. And how many of you? who happen to live in California, where we're broadcasting from live right now. How many of you are from the state of California? Raise your hand if you're from the state of California. All right. How many of you are here from other states in the US outside of the state of California? Please raise your hand if you're here. Represent yourselves. And finally, how many international webinar viewers do we have worldwide on this beautiful Earth Day that we celebrate worldwide? Raise your hand if you are here from across different locations outside of the US. All right, okay. So it's time to warm up a little bit before we get started here with our Earth Day Parts PE, restoring our bodies, restoring the Earth. Few items we need to go over. First of all, safety and health. Our number one priority here at California State Parks is your safety and your health. And because we're exercising today, those are even more important today. Now you'll notice I'm wearing a mask. And the reason I'm wearing a mask is that even though Hearst Castle, like many California State Parks, is closed to the public because of the pandemic, we do have other folks here, coworkers of mine, like my camera person and other tour guide that you'll see later today, we have to wear a mask to protect them as well as ourselves. Okay, now that being said, when we are also in close proximity to our coworkers, we wanna make sure that we maintain a good six to eight feet distance from each other. So keep that in mind today with Parks PE. Now, if you are outdoors like ourselves, in accordance with the federal guidelines of the US, as well as the state guidelines of the state of California, there's one exception to not wearing masks. And guess what that is? When you exercise outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off my mask right now so you can see my face. I'm gonna keep that mask in my pocket for safekeeping because I'll put that mask back on a little bit later. But in the meantime, when I see my coworkers, even though I'm huffing and puffing with the exercise, I'll make sure that I maintain good six to eight feet distance. If you're outdoors, you'll want to do the same thing. Now, if you're indoors watching us, that's fine too. If you're around people that you know who have also been vaccinated, feel free to take off that mask, okay? Other safety and health issues that we need to cover today, as I bend down, you'll notice that I'm picking up a water bottle here. As we like to say here at Parks PE, your own personal hydration station. We're gonna be doing about eight exercises today, somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 15 repetitions per exercise. So you know what that means, you'll likely get a little thirsty, a little parched, a little dry mouth. Please take a sip off of that water bottle, your hydration station when you need to do so. Your heart rate might also elevate a bit. You might find your breathing rate also again going up a bit. If you're feeling lightheaded at any time, we also want you for your safety and your health to have a seat and to rest it out. But join us for later exercises. Like I said, we're doing eight exercises. All right. That being said, one of our exercises today we're doing is going to be on the ground. So if you're outside, find a little grassy area. If you're indoors, find a little carpet or rug area when we come down on the ground for that exercise. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Hearst Castle before we start with our warm up here today. Now, William Randolph Hearst, he's a name that some of you might know, some of you may not know, but he would be comparable to today's Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook or maybe Rupert Murdoch. He was a media mogul, a giant in the world of media. And he was a very wealthy California businessman. So he decided he wanted to build here in San Simeon, a very re remote location of California, precisely because of its earthly beauty. And for plants to be able to conserve water because he loves gardens. You're gonna see 20 acres of gardens here later, as well as to be able to enjoy the views. 
we're going to enjoy the view of the clouds today because we are the castle in the clouds. Now, he would come up here as a boy uh, back in the late 19th century. He was born in the 1860s, and he would camp out with his mom and dad. And he said, someday I'm going to build up here. So this Hearst Castle location, this sumptuous property, and all of the gardens that you'll be seeing today are his childhood dream come true. And that being said, we'll talk a little bit more about William Randolph Hearst, but I want you to take a look at this beautiful live oak tree, a California live oak, because that is the basis of our first exercise, a warm-up exercise. This oak tree is somewhere between 250 to 300 years old. So you know that when William Randolph Hearst would build up here, he wanted to make sure he had plants that knew how to sustain themselves. A drought tolerant tree this is. And I want you to think like a tree because we're going to stretch like a tree. As a boy, William Randolph Hearst would climb up and down that tree. And so we wanna get those arm muscles and those leg muscles warmed up. So you can do this exercise seated if you want or standing. I'm gonna go ahead and do this standing. So as I turn from the camera, I'm gonna go show you what my posture looks like. Posture is so important for all the exercises today, as a matter of fact. Now my feet are about a hip to shoulder width stance. I bring my shoulders up, my shoulders back, and then I drop my shoulder blades down into my imaginary back pockets. I keep my tummy nice and tight and my rear end nice and tight. As I turn back to the camera, I'm gonna bring my arms straight out just like this, my thumbs towards the sky. I'll pull my shoulder blades together like this, okay? Take a big breath in and you're gonna reach for the sky just like so, then bring it back down. I want you to go ahead and hug yourself. Give yourself a big hug. There you go, there you go, big hug. Now bring it back out with an exhale, inhale in. So what you're doing is you're hugging yourself, you're hugging the world. So inhale, exhale. Now, some of us might have some issues with our shoulders. So can we do a different kind of exercise to stretch out these muscles that we're demonstrating being worked out with this exercise? Sure. I turn myself away from the camera, bring your hands behind your back, grab a wrist, push down with your palms, eyes skyward, squeeze your shoulder blades together, proud chest, and you can stretch by alternating your wrists just like this. Now, I mentioned in the exercises today, we'll be doing about five to 15 repetitions. So you can do this exercise if this is better for you. Otherwise, I'm gonna come right back out, be like that live oak tree and hug myself, hug the world. Warm up my shoulders, warm up my triceps, warm up my biceps. Those of you that want even more challenge, guess what? When you go to be that tree, come down to a squat. There you go. Then come up with an inhale, hugging yourself down with the exhale, up with the inhale. If you want even more of an exercise than this, without the squat, say standing, and you'll reach over, pivot with the opposite foot. I'm turning that foot and reach over and reach over and reach over. So I'm gonna come back to the original exercise, hugging myself and hugging the world with the squat. Let's go for 15, here we go. Shoulders up and back, inhale, and then squat. Count with me, and there's three, and there's four, that's five, that's six, that's seven. Make sure as you squat, you're coming down into a nice seated position. 10, 11, and 12, 13, 14, woo, there we go. All right, warm it up a little bit. Okay, so if you need to take a little break, go ahead and take a little drink off that hydration station. We're gonna show you another beautiful Earth Day, water tolerant, water conserving, drought tolerant plant called the fuchsia flower in Mr. Hearst's 20 acre garden. They planted here over hundred years ago. And as the camera comes over, you're gonna see this beautiful little fuchsia flower as I mentioned, it's drought tolerant, it's water tolerant, and you're gonna see all sorts of spectacular colors in that plant, red and purple. And what does that flower look like, do you think? How many of you think it looks like a dancer or a ballerina? Raise your hand if you do. Now, as the camera comes away from the fuchsia flower, we have a special guest here who is a ballerina dancer, and her name is Sylvia. So say good morning to Sylvia, everybody. Raise your hand and say hi to Sylvia. 
And what Sylvia is going to show you in our next exercise is a little bit of what a fuchsia flower might look like if it were a ballerina. She's gonna remove her mask because like me, she's exercising. We're maintaining a good six to eight feet distance. Take it away, Sylvia. Hi everyone, welcome to Earth Day Parks PE. Uh, so many of you may have taken ballet or are taking ballet right now. So we're going to do some fancy footwork. It's gonna be an eight count. Um, if you've danced before, usually uh, you count in eights. So we're going to do that today. I've got my fancy ballet skirt to help me today. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the most difficult modification to this, and then I'll show you some different ones. And depending on your level, pick the one that's best for you. The most important part is that you continue stretching and try to stretch every day. It makes a big difference in your uh, daily activities. I'm going to just give you a couple of pointers that we're going to see in the eight count. Um, in ballet, there's different positions for your feet. We're gonna use two today. The first one is going to be first position, which is just your feet out um, and touching in the backs. And then we're also gonna do second position. You just bring it out a little bit and they're just a little bit apart. Also, we're gonna be using different hand positions and they're all going to be, it looks like an arc. And when you're doing these positions, make sure that your elbows don't fall down, that you keep them up and lifted. You're always standing tall. Pretend that you have a string at the top of your head. It's attached to you and it's pulling you up. So any position that you do, you want to move out of that position and, and become as tall as possible. So whenever you're doing your hands, make sure they're rounded. Um, you can think of it as hugging a tree trunk. So we're gonna be here. We're also gonna be up here. So make sure that they're rounded. Don't lift your shoulders. Make sure your shoulders stay down, but you're very tall. So make sure that you try to hit those positions as best as possible. I'm going to show you the eight count and then some modifications. We're gonna start in second position, lifting up with our arms and we're gonna sway back and forth and we're gonna be stretching our sides. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. All of this should be stretched and even look to the side and point that toe because that'll give you an extra stretch. After the four, we're gonna bring it into first position and bring your arms down. And then we're gonna squat. We're gonna do a quick jump, lift up and bring it to here with your arms. And that's an eight count. I'll do it one more time and then show you modifications. So we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so if you want to do something a little bit different, you're not ready for that, uh, eight count, there's modifications. So you can just keep your hands down, second position, and then just sway back and forth and look to the side you're going. So one, two, three, four, bring it in, five, six, seven, eight, if you don't wanna jump. Uh, if you're sitting down, you can definitely do this. If you're sitting down, um, you would just, you can do just the arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hold, eight. So depending where you are, pick the modification that you want and just keep on moving. That's the important part. Make sure your posture is really good. All right, so here we go. We're gonna do three, eight counts. Pick the level that's best for you. I'll do the, the uh, toughest ones, but you go with what you want. All right, second position, are we ready? Hands up in an arc, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, hold seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, hold seven, eight. One more time and one, two, three, four, five, six, hold seven, eight. All right, very good, everyone. Thanks for joining me for Fancy Fuchsia Footwork here on Earth Day. Back to Laura. Thank you, Sylvia. That was great. Woo, I don't know about you, but did your heart rate get up? Raise your hand if your heart rate got way up with that one, especially with that jump. Okay, let's take a little walk along what William Randolph Hearst called his esplanade, a circular 400 meter or quarter mile sidewalk. 
And on this sidewalk are 20 acres of gardens. I keep repeating myself about that because for Mr. Hurst, it was all about the beauty and the views up here. And as we continue along the Esplanade, I want you to go ahead and march along with me or at home or in your yard, just march in place. And if you want to, you can even slam your foot down to give yourself a little more bone density orientation with that exercise. So we come along here and as the camera pans to the right, look at those beautiful azaleas in bloom. It most definitely is spring with the celebration of Earth Day here. And the azaleas, just like the fuchsia flower that Sylvia was showing you with that ballerina move and those dances, that happens to be a very drought tolerant, water conserving plant too. As I said, it was very important for Mr. Hurst to have gardens that could tolerate drought. Sometimes we end up having really rainy seasons here in the state of California, especially up here in San Simeon. We're at about 1600 foot elevation above sea level. As you continue looking at the gardens here to the left, you're talking about rainfall that is somewhere between 13 inches at a minimum to as much as 62 inches. That's about one to five feet of water in rainfall. So on those less rainy seasons, Mr. Hurst wanted to make sure that we had drought tolerant plants. You're looking at rhododendron a, a moment ago. There are some more azaleas that you'll see here to the left. And as we continue to walk through the clouds, the castle now comes into view. Now, believe it or not, Mr. Hurst called that his ranch house. That castle goes up all the way to the top of the tower that you see there, 137 feet in the air. And he would have all sorts of wonderful Hollywood guests that would come here. He was a very famous businessman. Like I said, he was like Mark Zuckerberg. He knew a lot of people, many of them actors, many of them politicians, and they would stay in that castle. There's like 115 rooms in that castle, 38 of which are bedrooms. Now, as we continue along the Esplanade, you'll see some more drought tolerant lantanas here that look like teardrops. And you'll also notice some artwork. Because Mr. Hurst was such a wealthy man, he collected artwork for most of his life. And he loved Italian and Spanish artwork in particular. So he wanted to create a garden that looked like something from Italy or from Spain. As we come along into the middle of the Esplanade here, we, you can clearly see, or cloudly see, I should say, mm. that we are definitely in the midst of the clouds and the castle behind us now. Now, what you're looking at are the Santa Lucia Mountains. But our photographer is going to show you a nice picture of what those Santa Lucia with some of the animals, the cattle, of the zebras that happen to reside out there on the Santa Lucia Mountains. Now, as we talk a little bit about Santa Lucia Mountains, we're talking about 80,000 acres of Hearst land. I'll come back in. Uh, you're looking at the clouds here, part of the castle. We are hoping to share a photograph here with you of some zebras and, of course, of some cattle, because 80,000 acres here uh, of this ranch is devoted to the cattle, and it's also allowing us, the Hearst Corporation has given us, the state of California, permission to be able to host this Okay, so sorry for the technical difficulties. So you'll see the zebras and the cattle there. That's what the Santa Lucia Mountains look like on a beautiful sunny day. And the cattle that you see there, 80,000 acres of ranch, grass fed, and they are, along with the zebras, Mother Nature's natural fire prevention devices because they like to gobble up the grass there. As I mentioned, we tend to go through drought years. We'll probably have a drought year this year. So those zebras and those cattle help to prevent fires. And of course, we know what wildfires can do. They create air pollutants and that can contribute to climate change. On this Earth Day, we wanna be observant about how can we best reduce our risk for fires. Well, those zebras and those cows 
can help us with that. And those zebras that you see there, they're the basis of our next exercise. We're gonna do what are called some zebra posterior kickers. So as I turn myself away from the camera, we wanna go ahead and put our stance to that hip shoulder width, shoulders up and back. You wanna tighten the tummy nice and tight. We'll bring the feet together here. And when you're doing a zebra posterior kicker, you're gonna be kicking back with your heel towards your rear end. You wanna take your knees under your hips. And you can just simply kick in place, standing in place, I should say, like so. You wanna bring some more challenge into it. Bring your arms into it, even more challenge. You can go ahead and kind of run in place, okay? So choose where you want to be. We're gonna do about 15 of these on each leg. Shoulders up and back, here we go. Posterior kickers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, heart rate's been up with that one. I'm certain of that. Now, that being said, on another beautiful day, you'd be able to see a rainbow blanket, the beautiful Santa Lucia mountains. And you'll be able to see this rainbow hopefully coming up uh, on your camera here and on your uh, viewing of from your device. And the rainbow that you see there was a picture that was taken here about a month ago after a rainstorm, much like today. And when the sun came through, you see that rainbow blanketing there. Now, with that being said, I want you to think about a beautiful rainstorm and a rainbow because that rainbow is the foundation of our next exercise. We call them rainbow rounders. You can do the seated, you can do the standing. Now you're gonna bring your shoulders up and back like I talked about in the beginning. Tighten the tummy, tighten the rear end, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and bring the hands together. Palms together like this, arms parallel with the ground. And we're gonna go ahead and then bring the arms up overhead and then round like a rainbow to the front. So in the front, overhead and around. Front, up overhead and around like a rainbow. Now, if we're having trouble because of our shoulders with this particular exercise, that's not a problem. We can go ahead and do like we did at the beginning. Bring our hands behind our back and alternate those wrists, just like so. Alternate and alternate, just like so. Otherwise, you come back and again, in the front, overhead and around. What some of you might be saying, Laura, this is not enough for me. So what can I do to make this more of a challenge? Bring your feet out a little bit and you're gonna go ahead and bring it up and around with a squat, just like so, just like so. And if you want even more of a challenge with the rainbow rounders, you can go ahead and bring your feet together and then you're gonna pivot and go to the opposite side and round like a rainbow. If you've got a weight in your hand, you can do the same thing. Okay, so choose where you want to be for the rainbow rounders and let's do 15, shall we? So out in front, up overhead and around with a squat if you want. There's two, count along with me. In Spanish, tres, cuatro, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Here comes numero siete, back to English, eight, Woo. nine, and 10, yes. Five to go, cuatro, tres, two, and one, there it is, all right. Grab that hydration station and let's do a little march in place as we end up going to our next exercise, okay? So as we come on up, we're gonna go up to the castle and it's front yard, stepping on up, take a little drink off that water bottle. And as our camera person comes up, to what's called the main terrace, the front yard of William Randolph Hearst summer home. You're looking at in the front door here with gold, 24 karat gold leaf. Just above the doorway there is a man on a horse. He is called the Duke of Burgundy. He's about 600 years of age. He doesn't look past more than maybe about 10 years of age, but he is another art piece in Mr. Hearst's art collection that he wanted to figure prominently here in his front yard. Now, as you think about horses, which by the way, are part of Mr. Hearst's ranch, along with the zebras and the cattle, we're gonna go ahead and come down on the ground. So here's where you wanna put your mat out, or if you're outside, piece of grass, 
We're gonna go ahead and put ourselves at the end of that rug or that mat. We're gonna go ahead and do a little hinge here at the hips, come down to a squat, and we're gonna walk it on out, okay? Now, for those of you that want to, stay on your knees and we're gonna kick like a horse, just like so. As I come out, I'm kicking with my foot flexed and my leg parallel with the ground. We're gonna do five on each side, okay? Now, if you'd rather, you can also stay on your knees and then kick up towards the sky, kick up towards the sky. Or if you want to come up into a triangle pose like so, and then you'll bring your knee into your chest and kick up like so. So you choose where you'd like to be on the ground, parallel leg, way up in the air leg on your knees or in the triangle, knee to chest and kick. We're gonna do five on each. I'm gonna take the most difficult. Here we go. So we'll start with one leg and go the other leg. Knee in and out. Good, knee in, exhale out. Number three, count along with me if you want. Number four, whoo, and number five. All right, switch those legs, here we go. Knee in and kick out for one and two, number three, number four, and number five. Good, come down to the knees. We'll bring it back up on our feet and we're gonna go ahead and take a look and some of the most beautiful land conservancy as part of this beautiful property known as Hearst Castle. So as we take a walk, grab your water bottle. We'll take a little hydration station break and the camera may be able to show you a picture of what San Simeon Harbor and the coastline happens to look like. What William Randolph Hearst would look at every time he stayed here out of his front door He'd be able to see that beautiful San Simeon Harbor and Pacific Ocean. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a walk. If you want to, you can march in place as we finish up with our last couple of exercises. And if we can see that view, drink in that view. And if not, that's okay. Just take a drink off of that water bottle and we'll go ahead and march in place down to a view of this beautiful land conservancy that you're about to see. At least we'll talk about the animals that inhabit parts of the areas of the land conservancy. So you wanna keep marching in place, take a little drink off that hydration station. All righty. So back in 2005, the descendants of William Randolph Hearst went ahead and they basically gave the state of California permission to go ahead and create what are called easements for state parks down on 13 miles of coastline, which we can't see today because of the clouds, but that's okay. But into perpetuity, what does that mean in perpetuity? It means that you and your families and your family's families can enjoy the coast of California because the Hearst Corporation and the Hearst family donated basically 13 miles of coastline from just north of a little town called San Simeon that I mentioned earlier, all the way up into almost Monterey County called Ragged Point. And there are state parks, California state parks there, a land conservancy to celebrate Earth Day. Now, that being said, there are a couple of um, animals that happen to live on the coastline, one of which is the elephant seal. About five miles away, just to the north of Hearst Castle, is a place called the Elephant Seal Beach or the Rookery. And as a picture comes up, you might be able to see a picture of the elephant seal. They're very graceful animals in the water. They're not so graceful when they come out of the water, but if you have the picture there, you'll see that they have flippers in the front and flippers in the back. Now, as we come away from the picture, I want you to think about that elephant seal because that's the basis of our next exercise, our second to last exercise. You wanna bring your feet together, bring those shoulders up, shoulders back, okay? Proud chest, tight tummy, tight rear end. And you're gonna bring your hands together like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and come out with a jump, like a jumping jack, but you're an elephant seal, elephant seal jack, okay? We're gonna do about 15 of these. Now, what if we can't do these because we have shoulder issues? Then step out, step in, step out, step in, step out, step in, or you can, Hop it out, hop it out, hop it out, hop it out. What if you have hip issues, all right? Then just clap and come out. Kind of like what you did in the beginning with the live oak, hug the world, hug yourself, all right? And if you want even more challenge, 
You go faster. Let's try for 15. One, two, three, four, five, six. Faster. Seven, eight, nine. Woo! Five to go. Four, three, two, one. There it is. Grab a little water. And one last exercise to wrap up the cycle of life on this beautiful Earth Day. We have an animal very prominent here in San Luis Obispo County. A lot, many counties actually in California. It's called the turkey vulture. And the turkey vulture, it is like the garbage collector or the garbage man of mother nature. It takes some of the animals that are on the side of the road that have passed away and makes it as part of their meal. So the turkey vultures have a very important role with mother earth that take care of cleaning up any sorts of leftovers. The turkey vulture you see has the wings out just like that. That's what we're gonna do to cool down, all right? So feet together, shoulders up and back, and you can just simply pulse like this. This is oftentimes what the turkey vultures will do on sunny days. They like to sun themselves and get wind under those wings. Otherwise, you can go ahead and you can kind of fly as well. So clapping in and clapping out, bring those wings out, bring those wings in. And if you want even more, put those arms into about a, a 90 degree angle where you've got your elbows right here and the upper arms parallel with the ground. And you can say goodbye and say hello. They say goodbye and say hello. And if you want even more, you can also put into a hip hinge as you say goodbye and then come up with a hello. Let's try 10 of these with the hip hinge. One. Uh, and two, come up with the exhale, come down with the inhale. Halfway there. Oh yeah, siete in Spanish, ocho, nueve, and number 10. And as we say goodbye to you on this beautiful Earth Day, Castle in the Clouds, restoring our bodies with the rest restoration of the Earth, we're hoping you restored your bodies. Because guess what? You get to see more of Hearst Castle here in the next hour because we are going to go ahead and focus on composting at Hearst Castle. As you take a look at my socks, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And that's what you get to see with Tracy and with Shannon today at Hearst Castle. Thank you for joining us today, everybody. We hope you got a good workout in. Take care. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to put that mask back on. Thank you. And end it.